Okay, there is this huge hype on the internet called van life. I know, it's not a new thing and it's also a bit cliche to make a video about that as a travel vlogger because obviously everybody's doing it right now, but hear me out. This whole van life thing totally blew up during the pandemic. Of course, people couldn't travel, so they started traveling their own countries. And since a lot of hotels also were closed, people started traveling in vehicles. And some of them bought or built their own camper vans. In the past years, camper vanning went from a very boring thing to do for grandma and grandpa to some kind of a Generation Y hype. If you scroll through Instagram or YouTube, you will see all these super happy couples. Sometimes with a dog, sometimes with a kid, sometimes alone, but always with a fully equipped, super fancy camper van. And I don't own any of that. But I'd really like to try it. My name is Matthias. I'm a solo traveler from Germany. And here's my very first van life experience. Before we start our little adventure, of course, we need a camper van. And since I don't own one, I need to rent one. And there are different options to do that here in Germany. And I'm pretty sure it's basically the same in your country. The first option would be to rent a camper van from like a normal renting company. The good thing about that is you get a quite new vehicle. It's fully equipped. You don't have to worry about anything. You get an insurance and all this kind of stuff. So you can just get into the car, and drive and everything will be fine. The problem about this way is it is also quite expensive. If I would rent a van from a company like this in my hometown, I would have to pay at least 1000 euros for a basic camper van, including the insurance for just one week. And that might be a good price if you are two persons, then you can just split the price but it's not a good price for a solo traveler. So the other option would be to rent a camper van from a private person. And for that, there are also market spaces on the internet where it's safe to do that. You also get an insurance. And if you have any problems with the van itself or with the owner of the van, that could actually happen, then you have somebody you can talk to at this rental company, which is great and it's also at least a little bit cheaper i found a van for one week and 2500 kilometers included for 800 euros and here it is Ta-da! <laughs> this is my home on wheels for the next few days as you can see this is a volkswagen t5 camper van the most cliche vehicle you could rent for a journey like this but I actually really like it. Let's take a look inside. Ah. <laughs> this is my bed for the next week. As you can see, this is a self-built camper van. This was a transporter before, so there's nothing luxury about that or something. And also this bed is not like an automatic version or something. No, this is a self-built bed. This thing here is also the backrest of the bed. You can pull it out here um, and put it in there. Then you have a backrest if you just want to sit around a little bit and if you don't want to sleep. Under this thing, we also have some drawers here. As you can see, we can put your stuff. That's also quite cool. Here we have the sink and also a little fridge. And the cool thing about that is this thing is charged by solar power and also the whole battery of this van is charged by solar power let's take a look around the van i hope you can see that ah there is a solar panel on the roof that means it should be possible to camp with this thing around a week without charging it because the solar panel is charging the battery and also uh, when you're driving it uh, it's also charging the battery and that means you don't have to go on a camping site and that's actually really cool we also have a subwoofer <laughs> over here <laughs> for the music 
let's see what we have over here. Whoops. Okay, that's the chunk of the car. Here we have a gas cooker and everything you need. Water. Uh, here's all the emergency stuff. And here we have tada, USB chargers for your mobile phone. So if you want to take your bike with you, that's also possible. And over here in this thing, we also have chairs and a table and stuff. Um, I'm not really sure if I really need that, but uh, yeah, we'll see. That's the cockpit of the van. Nothing special about it. It has a GPS, but unfortunately no air conditioning. But I think I will survive anyway. It's actually not that comfortable to drive because you can see here my legs are quite long. But yeah, that's a problem with many cars, so... <laughs> Well, and since this is a real hippie camper van, <laughs> we of course have these things over here. I don't even know how to call that. What is that? And we also have, like here on every Instagram picture, <laughs> these typical fairy lights. Of course, for a romantic night in the camper van. Yeah, and that's it basically. And last but not least, this camper van also has an alarm system. So if somebody tries to break in, no chance. <laughs> okay, this is the first sleeping test. Uh, oh, okay, this is actually <laughs> quite comfortable. Okay, and since we have um, a camper van now, I think the last thing we need is actually a route or something. Or do we actually need a route? I don't know. Well, the good thing about traveling in a camper van is you don't actually need a plan. You can just drive and sleep wherever you want. But to be honest, I made a rough plan and here it is. I'd like to go to southern Germany. My very first night in the camper van I will spend just a few hours away from my hometown. In the morning I'm gonna drive to the Black Forest where I'd like to see some nature. And after that I'm going to the Bavarian Alps until I reach the German-Austrian border. Here I will turn around and drive home again. Okay, <laughs> I'm really excited and I'm also a bit afraid to be honest. I just arrived at the place where I'm gonna spend my very first night here in this camper van. I arrived in a town called Kassel, it's like two hours away from my hometown and here's a huge parking space which is actually for cars but um, there are also camper vans allowed here. The problem is there are only five um, parking spaces for camper vans which are all occupied so I parked my van on a parking space that is actually just for cars and not for overnight stays but this parking space is so huge that I think nobody will care if I sleep here yeah that's what I'm doing now and I hope I will have a good sleep this whole van life thing is now officially starting <laughs> okay let's do this Okay, to be honest, this is different. <laughs> it's not that relaxing as I thought. There are cars driving around here all the time and it's already quite late, it's 11 p.m. Um, and that actually makes me a bit nervous and I actually don't know why because they don't want to rob me or something, I know that and everything is okay but I... Uh, I don't know. This makes me a bit nervous. <laughs> it's it's different. It's different to sleep in the back of a car uh, on a huge parking space with cars driving around. I don't know. I don't know how to say that. The good thing about this van is it has tinted windows, so I can look outside, but nobody can see me. And there is a car that just came. And it's standing there for like three or four minutes and there are people talking really loud and I don't know what they are doing there in the middle of the night. It's so fucking creepy. Okay, 
whatever. I will close the curtains now and then I will sleep. Oh, you watched until the end. That's great, but this is not the end yet. If you want to see more of my solo van life adventure, make sure to come back next week and then you will find another episode on my YouTube channel. If you liked this video, please leave a thumbs up. You can also hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss any upcoming episode. And if you like to support me and my work, please make sure to check out the Patreon link in the description. That's it for today. Have a safe journey and see you next time.